Well, good afternoon. Um, I'm the official cattle prod, and uh, you'll see me in action momentarily, so I'll save my, I'll let my deeds rather than my words express my presence. Uh, we have three presentations this afternoon. I'll introduce each of the speakers briefly now, and then we'll get underway. Um, our first speaker is Margaret J. Rausch of the University of Kansas. The title of her talk is The Hizmet Movement in Sufism, Moral Selfhood and Compassionate Engagement. At 421, Klaas Grinnell of Gothenburg University in Sweden will speak on Gulen's conception of knowledge. And at 442, John Paul of the Lutheran Theological Seminary at, Temp and, at uh, Philadelphia, not Temple University, at Philadelphia, will speak on the topic sacred space in the Hizmet movement and the thought of Fatula Gulen. Uh, this session is on religious studies and the Hizmet movement, and it strikes me that there probably are not three better themes to talk about the study of religion and Hizmet than these. So without further ado, I give you Professor Rausch. Welcome everyone to the last panel of the day. We're all a little bit tired, or at least I am. But um, so I hope I don't put you to sleep while I put myself to sleep. Anyway, um, I'm going to read my paper, so this is, makes it a little bit more problematic, but I think it will go okay. Fetala Gule <clears throat> Gulen has written and spoken extensively on the process of polishing the heart that underlies the development of the moral selfhood and compassionate engagement central to his life and the life of his met affiliates. Gulen's vision of this process is based on early Sufi scholarship and on the Quran and Hadith. It is theoretical and abstract, <clears throat> rendering its practical application challenging. Nevertheless, affiliates who have never met him but view him as their guide undertake it in ever-increasing numbers. Historically promoted primarily by Sufis, but theoretically equivalent to adep or proper comportment elaborated in non-Sufi manuals, it is, has recently become the focus of Islamic reform initiatives. Despite its centrality to the movement's success, no scholar has studied this highly individualized and emotional self-refashioning process. This paper investigates the role of affect in self-refashioning as envisioned by Gulen and experienced by movement affiliates. It, is also, it, uh, me, it also explores the potential for change after the passing of Gulen, whose guidance and example are central to it. Theoretical reflections. Scholar, <clears throat> scholarly interest in the role of affect in religion has grown in recent years. Notable is the importance of emotions in religious experience related to learning religion. In other words, the transformational process promoted by revival, reform, and spiritual advance, advancement initiatives in all religious traditions. The process entails cultivating new, new emotional dispositions, cognitive attitudes, and moral values through repetitive enactment of ritualized practices. The reiteration and embodiment of these dispositions, attitudes, and values in speech and action enhance conviction. Both performative and transformative, the process emulates early childhood language, affect, and morality socialization. Affect is central to Islamic worship, morality, and aesthetics. Refining emotions by training the nafis or carnal self is essential to piety and ethics, and cultivating adep or proper comportment is expected of all Muslims. Rooted in the self-referential and autodidactic verses of the Quran, self-refashioning was historically central to education and Sufism. An extensive corpus of Sufi poetry and treatises elucidates the states, ahval, or stages, makamlar, of self-refashioning. <clears throat> the, the appeal of self-refashioning lies in its links to early childhood socialization. The mother-child relationship has a formative and enduring effect on the child's constitution of the relationship between affect and religious ritual. 
the mother is the first to satisfy self-preservative needs and sensual desires. Her, sense, her sensory presence through bodily contact and verbal interaction is key to the child's introduction to ritualized behavior, which has a lasting effect on later experiences. Equally central is her role in language learning, which is integrally linked to the learning of affect and morality, since mother tongue acquisition both encodes embodied emotions and forms the basis of morality socialization. In Sufi, neo-Sufi, and reform, <clears throat> Islamic reform initiatives, uh, affiliates acquire a new language on piety and ethics that links them to early childhood experiences. This process relies on companionship among affiliates who are referred to as brothers and sisters. Leaders and advanced affiliates guide others in learning new, the new language and in enabling their self-refashioning by serving as nurturing role models. Noteworthy is the resemblance to techniques employed by nationalism projects which drew on religion. According to several scholars, poetic forms constitute a powerful means for awaking emotions and creating sense of community, particularly in the context of their communal performance. Like the public singing of national anthems, the repetitive performance of poetry or prose texts replete with poetic imagery by Sufis, neo-Sufis, and Islamic reformists are performative. Like iterations of statements describing emotional states, they enable the cu cultivation of the dispositions, attitudes, and values described in them and promote sense of community based on a shared language or discourse. The daily life embodiment of the discourse enhances conviction. <clears throat> Two scholars have explored self-refashioning undergone by his Met affiliates. In her study of narratives by four, by four women affiliates, Elizabeth Özdalga argues that based on their use of the terms love, self-criticism, and humility, her interviewees, all, and I quote, all studied their Gulen catechisms thoroughly. <clears throat> Secondly, Hyun Kim, in his study of dialogic Sufism, asserts that the language in Gulen's works, <clears throat> which derive from the historical Turkish Sufi tradition, appeals to the collective consciousness, or shakhsi manawi, of contemporary Turks. It leads them to share his thoughts and feelings and to sanction his charismatic leadership, he argues. And dialogue and educational activities enable them to internalize and externalize virtues and bind them to his met or service. My, my paper, by contrast, seeks to show that Gulen created a new language and that Shaksi Manavi refers to affiliates' collective spiritual interconnectedness, both of which center on affect. Following anthropologist Deborah Caption's assertions that speech genres have the ability to create as well as describe a world, and that their analysis reveals how subjectivities and feelings are created at the discursive level, I argue that the poetic imagery and emotional style of Gulen's writings and sermons aim at softening affiliates' hearts for self-refashioning. As in early childhood socialization, self-refashioning reshapes their relationship to language, morality, and affect. By emulating advanced affiliates and embodying the new dis dispositions, attitudes, and values through the performance of his met, affiliates cultivate moral selfhood and compassionate engagement. Now I'm going to take a look at um, uh, part, some of the, the quotes from Gulen's work, some of the ways that I feel that Gulen expresses what I've just uh, explained in his work. Um, a common topic in Gulen's vast corpus of written and oral works is education. It comprises, <clears throat> comprises early childhood upbringing, formal education, and beyond. At all levels, it is characterized by the cultivation of emotional dispositions, co uh, cognitive attitudes, and moral values through role modeling. 
Some of his writings are intended for a general readership, while others specifically address his Met affiliates. The latter, supplemented by cassettes, videos, and cassettes and videos, aim at guiding self-refashioning. The language of his writings and sermons is essential to this process. His vision of the role of language is articulated in the following excerpt from a short article entitled Language and Thought. I quote, language is one of the fundamental dynamics in the composition of a culture. Language is an important tool for humankind in efforts to better understand the cosmos and events holistically and analytically. The more colorfully a nation can speak, the more they can think. <clears throat> The more they can think, the broader is the span their speech can reach. The capacity of a language to express a thought is related to the level of development it has achieved, and a thought can become the instrument by which the language is tuned to this level of development. For every aspect, language plays a defi defining role in the formation of culture." End quote. In this text, Gulen suggests his intent to foster the formation of a language and a culture or way of life. Affiliates acquire this language by reading and discussing his works. Particularly popular is his book-length study of the prophet's life story entitled Son Tzu's Ushuk, or Infinite Light, and periodicals such as Suzun Tzu Ailuk Ilim Kultur Dergesi, or in English, Trickling, a monthly science culture magazine. Each issue contains two short articles by Gulen. The first, at the beginning of the magazine, covers a wide range of topics, and the second, found in the middle, treats one of the dispositions, attitudes, or values discussed in his book on Sufi spiritual advancement techniques, um, entitled Kalbun Zumrut Tepelere, or Emerald Hills of the Heart. Like listening to his cassettes and viewing <clears throat> his video, videos of his sermons, reading his works connects affiliates to him and awaken, awakens their emotions. It fosters self-refashioning, enabling the development of moral selfhood and compassionate engagement. Now I turn to the implementation of Gulen's vision. This section dr draws on responses to qu open-ended interview questions offered by 40 affiliates. Originally from Azerbaijan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Turkey, but currently residing in the U US, they include graduate students, teachers in Gulen-inspired schools, and other professionals. Their experiences of affect in self-refashioning related it to five main themes. Self-transformation through language, communal interconnectedness, Gulen's role as a guide and example, Gulen's passing, development through the performance of his Met. So now I'll turn to the first theme, language and self-transformation. Gulen's new language transforms affiliates, bringing new life meaning, direction, and beauty. And now I quote from the first response. Gulen is a clairvoyant scholar who opens people's horizons with his words and ideas. His met gave my life real meaning. My education, work, life, everything is indexed by it. New quote. All the beauty in my life emerges from involvement in his met. It delineated a new path for my life. I became a better person. New quote. It changed my outlook, attitudes, and way of thinking. It shaped my personality. New quote. Before, I sought monetary recompense for every service. I did not like to share. But now, serving humanity is central to my life. New quote. The most important aim is sharing ideas with others. This requires acquiring a new language. I learned the appropriate language for interacting with people from all walks of life. New quote. The richness and feeling of Gulen's words impassioned me. I transformed myself to be an integral part of the community. The last quote for this theme. Hoja Effendi's words and actions, sermons and examples, thoughts and ideas had a huge impact on me emotionally and spiritually. I try to reproduce them with my words and actions. 
Theme number two, communal interconnectedness. Communal interconnectedness is essential to self-refashioning, according to the interviewees. I quote, his met would not be his met without living examples. It is a continuous multi-level process connect connecting individual and community. New quote, first I learned to respect my parents and family. This occurred when my Abi visited my family. He told them I was a courageous person with a great personality. I doubted his words, but was moved, and I wanted to speak like him and have his qualities. Everyone knows what an Abi is, a big brother, right? Okay, sorry, I forgot to explain that. Um, next quote, you, you learn to get along with everyone living in Ushik Evler. And Ushik Evler are these dormitories that belong to his Met that uh, enable um, less fortunate uh, students to live near an, a university so that they can get an education. So <clears throat> you learn to get along with everyone living in Ushik Evler. You get used to an orderly and disciplined life. New quote. The Abiler in my Ushik Ev were my role models. But I continued to play basketball with old friends, guys with long hair and earrings. <laughs> One day I asked myself, do you want to be like his met people or these guys? The answer was, like his met people. Then my love for them grew. Abiler are real guides. They stay up all night pondering others' problems. I knew little about Islam and had long hair, but they did not criticize me. <laughs> New quote. All his met activities are about forming relationships with people within and outside his met, being part of an enormous family and working together. New quote. His met people's lifestyles taught me to think of others before myself and be humble. Instead of saying, I did it, we say, we did it. We line up to take responsibilities with no interest in recompense. New, co new quote. Bobby is speaking. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm almost there. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay, <laughs> um, I'm going to skip. That was communal interconnectedness. There's a lot of really interesting aspects. Um, there's, um, let's see. Yeah, I like this one. Um, the, an environment of trust, love, and companionship surrounds his met people. New quote, when you are surrounded by living examples of compassion and altruism, becoming filled with the desire to devote yourself to serving others is unavoidable. I like that one. Um, the next theme is Gulen's guidance. Gulen's guidance is important to affiliates' development, according to the inter interview responses. I quote, Gulen is so sensitive, even an ant's suffering saddens him. He cares about Muslims, but also people of other traditions. He cries for them, accusing himself for not preaching about Islam adequately so that they believe. When he mentions the Prophet's name, he remembers what he did and starts crying. The Prophet was usually hungry, but always offered a meal to others. He is the best example, but the one who suffered the most. These topics make Gulen cry. New quote, Gulen influences his met people through his emotionality. He cries, when he cries, others cry. He knows Islam and the prophets intimately and experiences spirituality wholeheartedly. He is the best modern example. If I had not met him, I would not be involved in dialogue activities. After, new quote, after many years, I cried one night while praying. Then I knew I had really changed. New quote, Hoja Effendi's sincerity is his most valuable quality. His books and sermons affect affiliates. Um, I'm going to skip down to the last one. Hoja Effendi's words and ideas are the foundation of the movement all over the world. They, we apply them daily. In the end, however, it is the movement that makes our development possible. With its Ushuk Evler, Abiler, Ablalar, its schools and his met activities, all are inspired by him. Gulen's passing, I don't know which is more important. Yeah, Gulen's passing, I'll say a couple of things. Most people agreed with the following statement. His met will continue since it consists of people working on different issues and not a structure directed by only one person. Um, 
Yeah, and now I'll move to the last theme, the Hizmet as, as process. <clears throat> people are constantly, his, I quote, his, uh, his met people are constantly involving, evolving emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. It is a gradual, ongoing process with many levels, aspects, and dimensions. Your trust in others and their trust in you increases with time as you perform, um, as you perfect your performance of his met. In other words, this part has lots of interesting quotes, but it, the bottom line is that you, the development goes on on multiple levels and your, your, in fact, your practice of his met increases your development in other areas as well. So they feed, the different areas feed on each other. I'll read the last quote from this section. Each day is a step forward. You read books, listen to cassettes, emulate Abilert and Ablalar, and help others. It is all part of his met. I, I matured by performing his met. My conclusion. It's a short one, too. It's not three paragraph song like someone had this morning. <laughs> As the responses elucidate, Gulen is deemed an exemplary model for emulation and a source of emotional, intellectual, and spiritual nurturance. To convey to affiliates the beauty, depth, and richness of Islamic ethics and piety, he created a language that informs a way of life, ensuring his own dispensability. Linking them to childhood experiences of morality, aff affect, and language socialization, this language arouses emotional responses, enabling them to undergo self-refashioning. They grow, share, and work together, embodying the new way of life and transmitting it to people across the globe through their words and deeds in service to humanity. More successfully than his Sufi, neo-Sufi, and Islamic reformist counterparts, Gulen has inspired a vast global community to develop moral selfhood and compassionate engagement for serving the world's people. Key is self-refashioning, and central to it is the role of affect. Thank you.